In this video, we'll be going over the process of doing an MPX Western analysis. Now, if you want to, you at the beginning of your image acquisition, you can set the MPX Western as your analysis type. But if you did not do that, if you go into the image uh, afterwards, uh, you can, on the analysis ribbon right here, set MPX as your analysis type under the, the type group right here. You can also access this through this pull down menu right here and choose MPX Western. And you'll notice that there will be a new ribbon that appears out here uh, with all the options for the, the MPX Western analysis. So chances are you will need to redraw the boundary for this and also choose the uh, marker type that you, or the lane types that you have. For this particular image, we have a single marker lane with four sample lanes right here. So that's what I'm going to choose. And I'm going to click redraw boundary. And you want to draw the boundary just to the outside of your outermost lanes. And once the lane lines drop down on there, you want to try to get these lines going somewhat through the center of the bands. And you can do that by adjusting the, the border right here. And once you have that in the correct location, you don't have to worry about uh, them going directly through the center because when you click the Find button right here under the Bands group, uh, the lane lines will be moved into the correct location. And so the first thing that you want to do at this point is to adjust the band finding sensitivity. And normally you will want to switch over to single color mode and then you can adjust this using the more or fewer options. And if using the more or fewer does not give you what you need, you can highlight one of the particular bands if, if it's uh, not needed and click the delete button on your keyboard. You can also add individual band markers if you want to. You can add them manually just like that. Uh, or if you want you can use this add to all lanes and then it will draw that across all the the bands on the entire uh, on all of the lane lines right there now it will exclude the marker lane uh, just to make things uh, work easier and you can do the same thing over here in the 800 channel you can click the add to all lanes and you get it somewhat through the center of all of those and then yeah, you can make adjustments up or down uh, or to the size of them as needed. Now for the marker lanes, uh, I will be discussing the, the chameleon markers here in just a moment. But for right now, I'm going to go with the Lycor one color marker. And um, since this is a single marker lane, it puts it here in the left hand lane. Now if need be, if you did have the image reversed, you could um, move it as, as needed uh, to get the correct placement of the marker. For normalization, uh, if you have a normalizing factor in each one of these uh, channels, you can set uh, the normalization. For right now, we're going to go with the 700 channel uh, for the normalization factor. Uh, for the background subtraction, you can choose uh, median or average, which are exactly the same calculations used uh, if you were to manually edit um, an image here uh, using the, the rectangles and you can also have use the option of lane and lane is probably good for most applications uh, unless you have a lot of non-specific banding uh, within your lane uh, but if you have a fairly specific uh, antibody that you're using uh, using the lane calculation uh, will be very appropriate for that so as we get into the data down here, we have two new tables that appear, the MPX Western Lanes and Western Bands tables. Now here in the, in the Lanes table, uh, if I highlight this one, you see that this becomes active right here. If I were to change the name of this lane, so if I were to put the antibody information, that were the antibodies that were used in this particular lane, if I added that uh, to that lane name, uh, lane name is also... Uh, available here on the bands table and so then that name would be changed right there. Now for the quantification 
Um, the uh, signal is the exact same calculation that is used uh, if you were to just simply draw the shapes on there. The molecular weight is based off of the size of the weight markers right here. And if you want to make sure that the, uh, the weights that are available in the marker are appropriate for your image, if you click on this edit button, uh, what you will want to make sure is that the highest molecular weight right here, this 250, matches up, or that that actually is the 250 band, 150, 100, and so forth, to make sure that the band markers that you have in your lane actually match up with the weights that are designated here. Now, if you do need to make some modifications, you can add or remove band markers from this. And anytime that you change one of these defaults, it then becomes a uh, custom marker set. Right here, it becomes custom. And then if you want to save that for future use, uh, if you're reusing the same type of markers or if you're using a marker from a different company, uh, you can save that marker set as one of your defaults. Now, uh, normalized signal is based off of a normalization factor. And the normalization factor is determined by finding the band that has the highest signal out of all of the uh, bands in the normalization channel. And if we look here and find the, the one, uh, this one right here. And so it is determined that this band right here has the highest signal out of all of the bands in the 700 channel. And taking that signal divided by itself, it comes up with a normalization factor of one. It then moves on to all of the other bands on the image and takes the signal from uh, that particular band divided by that highest signal to come up with a normalization factor, this point 771, which means that Image Studio has determined that there's 77% as much protein loaded in uh, this last lane as compared to the reference lane. It then takes that normalization factor and applies it to the signal from the 800 channel. And so using the same lane, this 0.771, it takes the signal divided by the normalization factor to come up with the normalized signal. And so that, that's the process that it goes through. So if you would like to see some more information on how that calculation is done, uh, here, if you click on the help button, uh, there is there is more information about the, the full calculation. Now, for the camellia markers, I will need to switch to a different image. And here, I've already, this is a basic Western analysis, but the process is the same for using the camellia markers. And with this, what you will need to make sure is that you choose the correct marker. So if you will be doing molecular weight sizing for the 700 channel, you will need to choose the chameleon, either the 700 marker or the chameleon duo 700 marker. And that depends on which one you load it. So if you did load the two color marker, you will need to use the, the 700 marker or the dual 700 marker. And then if you just have the, the single 700, you choose that one. The difference is that uh, there is one extra band in the duo marker compared to the single color. So you do need to make sure that you choose the correct one. And for this one, I am going to choose the 700 because this was from the, the dual marker. And from this, you will need to um, make sure that you have everything set up correctly as far as what is being shown. Right now, I'm going to turn off all of these. Here we go. And so for the molecular weight marker right here, I have the chameleon 700 dual marker because that has this extra 125 kilodalton band, which is not visible in the single uh, 700 marker. And so once I have that designated, I also need to make sure that I turn off or I hide all of the 800 bands because since the 800 will be using a different marker, they will not be sized correctly if I don't hide those. And the way that you do that is to right click on the channel header right here and hide the 800 bands. And so then those are not shown here. Um, and so once I have everything shown correctly and I've made sure that I'm using the correct marker uh, and everything is done correctly, I will then go ahead and export 
uh, as I normally would. If you want some more information on exporting uh, tables, that will be covered in a different uh, tutorial video. So then once you have uh, exported all of that, you will need to switch back to the 800 channel or switch over like that and then switch your marker to the 800 marker. And just make sure all the bands are set up correctly, uh, just like we did with the 700 marker. And then, then you go ahead and export that, uh, the, the 800 data on their own, and then everything will be sized correctly. Thank you very much.